Good morning. My name is Monica Buluma. I'm a cancer survivor, cancer of the esophagus. Wow. Makofi Tafadali. Well, good morning. Um, my name is Michael Joseph. I'm sure you know. Um, it's probably the first time in public that I'm saying that I'm a cancer survivor. I've said it to my team before, but I contracted cancer. I was diagnosed with cancer in uh, 2003, and uh, I'm a survivor, as you can see, and it was colon cancer. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Vidanya Barasa, and I'm a cancer victoress, and um, I had colon cancer, and it's been two years and a half now. My name is Ben Mushami, a.k.a. Babashiro. Those who know what I do for a living, uh, to make sure I'm a cancer survivor and a cancer liver, because uh, as we survive, we have to live. Uh, thank you very much. My coffee, Tafadali. <laughs> Dorothy Nyongo, yeah. and I'm a caregiver. Thank you, Dorothy. All right. Um, in no particular order, Michael, I think I want to start with you. The main thing why I would like to, why I'm here and, and sort of use this, you know, this opportunity is because I think that in Kenya today, there's far too many uh, people who are diagnosed with cancer. And I think, you know, there are some reasons for it. And I think to, to a large extent, and I'm sorry, Peter's not, here, Peter's not here, but to a large extent, this is the responsibility of government. You know, we have huge pollution in Kenya massive pollution. You go outside on that road, you'll see trucks, cars emitting huge amounts of lead poisoning into the air. The food that we eat is contaminated with insecticides, with pesticides. You know, it's all around us. And we have all the legislation that we need in this country to stop all that. But we don't care. And we don't care. The government doesn't care to, to legislate and to stop it. And so I think, you know, to, to say, to come here today and say, look, you know, I didn't get cancer. I didn't get. I didn't get cancer in Kenya for sure because I had it for some time, but I was misdiagnosed for one year. But nevertheless, I do think that you see the prevalence of cancer today in, in Kenya, and I think there is something we can do about it, other than, you know, just to try and diagnose it and then try and cure it when you have it. I'm sure there's things we can do. And number one is, I think, the environmental environmental pollution that's in that's in Kenya. Thank you. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, I was diagnosed with cancer in. February 26, 2008, uh, after four years of misdiagnosis in various hospitals and all over the place, until I changed my doctor. Thank Michael because, uh, as he's private, he gets also very concerned when these things happen. But my late brother, General Moshemi, died of cancer. 2007, my best friend who introduced me to Larry also died in 2007. And we used to share with him because he was a very close friend of my brother. And after staying six months in London with him and saw what he went through, I didn't also had cancer because when this Dr. Smith from Aka Khan all of a sudden discovered, I did one endoscopy, which I had done six of them before and being told I have something called acute reflux. And we used to share medicine with Dr. Mangeli of Kebs. We used to have some medicine called Nexium that we used to share with him because we were supposed to be seeking the same thing, but he was, when he went to India, he was discovered he had uh, sinuses, I had cancer, and I had a 4 kg tumor in my body. So they did a 16 hour operation. I was in a coma for two days, ICU one month, and recovery for three months, operating with a separate stomach. They removed 80% of my stomach. And I thank Michael, of all things, because when he knew this, he told me, Ben, you have to live through this thing. You have to look for something that is passionate. And there, that's where motorsport came. When I was in ICU, I had these motorsport videos running in my ears. So I knew I had to come and do it, although he told me it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> doing that. But it made me go yeah. through what I went through. Last year, September, I did my tests. I was told I'm clean for the last four years. And last month, I had some belching. I decided to go and see a doctor. I went through. Uh, all the tests, and they discovered that my cancer has come back. Yes. So, three, four weeks ago, I took, I went to, I think we Sanda, we went driving in uh, 
the next day, I was told on Friday, Saturday, we were in Eldoret tracing ourselves there. I told my driver to take me to the airport, and off I went to India. And on Friday, I started my chemotherapy, the new one called Unipec. Here it's 380,000 shillings. In India, it's only 70,000. I've just taken my dose of chemo here after breakfast. This is 14,000 in Kenya, it's 700 shillings in India. So, as I'm talking, I'm on my second chemo because my type of, of cancer is metastatic. It hides and goes to somewhere else. So it's starting to go to the liver and I have to go six sessions of cancer. But the best medicine in all this with the food we have and wheat grass and everything is 80% up here. I, the reason why I had my cancer here, uh, my treatment here, I did the surgery here, and I also had my chemotherapy in Kenya. And uh, for me, I told myself cancer is not going to change my life. From onset, I said I'm going to fight it as much as I can. And I didn't want to change my everyday life. I still wanted to go to work. So I was able to still go to work. I, still, I love traveling, so I still wanted to travel. And also just, you know, I wanted it to be an experience within my normal life because I thought going out of, out of the country will be, okay, now I'm sick, I'm an invalid. And I've rarely gotten sick, so for me that wasn't something I wanted to, to deal with. And my experience was quite positive in the sense that I had a very good doctor who I did quite a number of tests for about three months. Chemotherapy is six months, but I decided to do eight months only because, again, I wanted to travel, I wanted to work. So I had an outpatient in um, Mpisha, whereby uh, after every three weeks, uh, you go for uh, intravenous for only four hours, which was fine with me. And then after a week, I take uh, tablets. So now with um, lots of technology advancement, there's the oral chemotherapy. So I take tablets after every week. And that really worked out very well for me, and I did it for eight months. And my last one was in October 23rd. So every October 23rd, I'm celebrating life. First, cancer is still a lifestyle disease. When it affects the poor, it doesn't mean that it's not a lifestyle disease. You see, what happens is that as, as the poor eat more processed foods, because it is available and it is cheap, uh, the poor consume most sugar uh, because tea has become part of the diet. Uh, the poor consume more white bread or, or processed wheat. You see, it means that the lifestyle has changed from depending largely on organic food like we did to now depending on food bought from the market or from the, or from the shops which are processed. There should be very strict environmental standards to reduce pollution. For example, motor vehicles. There should be very strict environmental standards which say that a motor vehicle that is driven on the streets of Kenya, the roads of Kenya, must not have exhaust fumes because there's a, a way of stopping and doing that. The third thing which is very important, which affects us in the medical sector, is what is called biomedical waste, the way we get rid of biomedical waste. At, the, at the point, this point in time, we get rid of biomedical waste either by burying them in the soil, which is very dangerous, because Chokoras will go there and get them. As, as happened in Nyeri, I had to go to Nyeri one time and uh, really, really tell them to stop this nonsense. Or you burn them in incinerators, and that is very dangerous because the fumes from biomedical waste are a thousand times more dangerous than the fumes from industrial waste. And since those fumes are exhibited in a hospital where you have a closed community and people whose uh, immune system are really compromised because they are sick anyway, if they breathe, breathe that uh, fume from biomedical waste, you are setting them up for cancer. So what we are doing in the ministry at the moment is working with a Belgian company to bring a technology which we will use to get rid of biomedical waste without burning them. Because we ourselves are our own enemies. Since we are incinerating biomedical waste in hospitals where people should be treated, we are actually creating disease in hospital by burning it like that. We must stop it. So I agree with you. A lot needs to be done. We have not done enough. And if we are going to deal with cancer, fumes, industrial fumes, and fumes from cars, and fumes from biomedical waste, 
burning must stop.